Um, one of the other things, and I'll, I'll keep going, but uh, this is my, I'll tell you one of my things that I, my, you know, <clears throat> don't want to become a crusader on this one, but one of the experiences we see is with children who um, have experienced disrupted attachments is they, they have less compassion and empathy for others. So attachment actually increases so if you've got a healthy attachment, secure attachment with your parents, you have the protective shield around you, and you actually have more capacity for compassion, contribution, and empathy for others. And frankly, as a citizen of this world, I would like some other good citizens of this world. Right? I want to see our children growing to understand compassion and empathy. I believe we have, that's a whole other talk we could come back and do another night, honestly, <laughs> is about empathy and compassion and how to strategize it in this world in which we are not actually supporting it a lot of the time, right? So um, even children coming from, you know, strong attachments, are we still need to be really assisting them in developing their compassion and empathy and contribution. For kids that have a, a very big wound there, it really diminishes their capacity, right? To because it's because they're in pain. When we are in pain, we go into what's called survivor mode, right? Survivor mode shuts us down, makes us all inside. You know, we're talking. I got to take care of me. I got to take care of me when I'm in survivor mm -hmm. mode, as opposed to when we're in <coughs> contribution mode, which is like I get great joy and a wonderful feeling to help you, right? Like that's my great joy is to help you, right? So this is where we get. Um, there's so many reasons we want healthy attachments.